For simple pendulums, the period of motion is given by this equation. 2 pi times the square root of L over G. L is the length of the pendulum. G is the acceleration due to gravity, which on Earth is going to be about 9.81. If we were on the moon, it would be about 1.6. That's what G is. We notice here that the period of a pendulum is independent of mass and of amplitude. And we can tell just by looking at the equation that the period must be independent of both mass and amplitude because if it depended on the mass there would be a mass term in the equation and there would be an amplitude term in the equation if amplitude affected the period. So the fact that mass and amplitude don't appear in the equation tells us that those variables don't affect how long it's going to take the pendulum to swing all the way over and come all the way back. The length of the pendulum will affect that time and the acceleration due to gravity will affect that time but the mass of the bob is irrelevant, the amplitude is irrelevant. Okay, so let's do a problem or two. The period of a pendulum is 5.2 seconds, find its length. So we need to take this given equation and we need to solve it for L. Let's divide both sides by 2 pi. Let's square both sides to get rid of the square root sign. And then if we multiply both sides by g, we get this expression. And the reason, of course, we've done that is because we're asked to find the length. So we need to put all the other variables together on one side of the equation with l by itself on the other side. Unless we're told otherwise, we're going to assume that we're on Earth. So g is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. We know what the period of the pendulum is. And 4 pi squared is simply a constant. 6.7 meters is the length of this pendulum. What about the mass of the bob? Not enough information. The mass of the bob has no influence on the period of the pendulum's motion. This is what I call the Bergman chicken equivalency. In other words, if you take that 6.7 meter long pendulum and you put Mr. Bergman on the end of it and swing it back and forth, it'll take 5.2 seconds to swing back and forth. If you take Mr. Bergman off and you attach a chicken to the end of that 6.7 meter long pendulum, the chicken will swing back and forth with the exact same period that Mr. Bergman does, which goes to show that in some cases there is no definable difference between Mr. Bergman and a chicken. Let's do another problem. On Io, a moon of Jupiter, a 0.87 meter pendulum has a period of 8.74 seconds. What is the acceleration due to gravity on Io? So let's use that equation for the period of a pendulum and we need to solve it for g. In other words, we need to get g by itself and right now g is buried underneath the L and underneath this square root sign. So let's divide both sides by 2 pi. Let's square both sides to get rid of the square root sign. Let's cross multiply to get rid of all the denominators and now we're going to divide by t squared such that g is by itself and all the other variables are on the right side of the equation. Then we simply put in the numbers we have. The length of the pendulum is 0.87. The time, that is the period of the pendulum, is 8.74. Remember to square that. And the acceleration due to gravity on Io is quite a bit smaller than on the Earth. On the Earth g is about 9.8 and on Io it's only 0.45 meters per second squared. Neither amplitude nor mass of the bob affect the period of a simple pendulum. Again, if they did affect the period we should see a term for mass and a term for amplitude in this equation and we don't. Point number two, for a simple pendulum 
Because bobs can never quite be point masses, the length of the pendulum is best measured from the pivot point to the center of mass of the bob. In other words, when we measure the length of a pendulum, I'm going to take my laser pointer and start it in the upper right here. When we measure the length of the pendulum, we should measure it right to there, the center of mass of the bob. We're not going to measure it simply to this connecting point. We're going to measure it from the pivot up at the top all the way down to the center of mass. That's going to give us the best results.